welcome or welcome back to Mumming Abroad. My name is Ashley. I am an American expat living in the Netherlands and I post videos about mom life, gentle parenting, respectful parenting in particular, as well as being an expat, so life in the Netherlands. And I also like to connect those two topics together, so posting videos about raising a uh, bicultural, bilingual, or trilingual child, and uh, just share general experiences that I find interesting, both as an expat and as a mom. Uh, so today's video is my top 10 tips for traveling overseas with a toddler. This is something that I have done several times now, uh, flying back and forth from the Netherlands to the United States. And it is something that I am right now doing uh, quite often. I just uh, went during a pandemic in March of 2021 with my two and a half year old. And I will be going again uh, this coming month in the summer of 2021. And she will be almost three years old at the time. So I will have a few different tips um, for the whole toddler range uh, included into this list. Uh, please do bear in mind that every child is different. So some tips may apply either more or less to your child, you need to know what is best for your child and adjust these tips as needed. But I do think that um, these videos were really helpful for me when I was preparing uh, for flights. And even though I am very experienced uh, traveling with uh, my daughter also alone with her, um, so a lot of most of these tips will be from the um, point of view of doing it by myself, um, even though my husband does come uh, with us back to the United States, um, he does so probably about a third of the time that we actually go. So generally I am doing this by myself. So it is extra important to be prepared when you are traveling alone with a toddler. So I'm going to get into it now. I hope you find this useful. If you do, please give this video a like and consider subscribing if you like my content. Okay, tip number one is to make sure that you prepare all documentation in advance and that you make printed copies of everything that you think you will need. So this is going to vary um, from person to person. Uh, so one thing is that you want to make sure that you have uh, basically a clear system in place. Uh, some people really like to just put everything in their phone and their phone is always with them in a safe spot. So they find that the easiest way to do it, which is fine. Uh, do keep in mind that if you do that, you may not always have internet access or good cell phone reception. So you do want to have those documents if you're doing it on your phone then. You want to have all of the documents in a place on your phone that you can access without needing the internet or um, data reception in order to access them. You want to be able to access them regardless of whether your phone battery dies, honestly, or if you have internet or, or data. So do keep that in mind when you're traveling. For that reason, I like to have things on my phone, but I like to also always have my backup printed documentation of everything. Even if I never end up using it, I make sure um, because you need the tickets anyway. Sometimes you can um, get like a QR code or your ticket on your phone uh, when you are doing, you know, pre check in and all that. But with international travel, I still find that you always need to have your actual paper ticket anyway. So I usually make sure that I have everything in a hard copy. And when I do that, I make sure that I have a really secure separate place for that vital documentation. And generally what I do then is I keep uh, these things in that area or compartment. Um, I usually like it to be like a small zipped area that can close all the way that has nothing else in it. And the things that I include in there are our passports, our uh, tickets, if uh, boarding passes, if we um, have been given paper boarding passes, uh, before we get the boarding passes, then I like to have a printed uh, copy of our itinerary in there as well with all the dates and times highlighted as well as the flight number. And also if you are renting a car, your confirmation of your car rental. Um, uh, if you are traveling by yourself uh, overseas with your child, and um, your husband or wife needs to give permission. So for example, in order to leave the Netherlands alone with my child, I need a um, form printed and signed by my husband saying that he gives permission 
and acknowledges that he is aware of the fact I am taking our child out of the country. So I have that printed form in there as well. And then also uh, my daughter is not yet an American citizen. Um, she has the rights to be. I just haven't gone through the formal process of doing that. So she still needs an ESTA form every time she goes to the United States. So I always make sure I have the confirmation of that approval printed as well. And I keep that all together. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, I will have, if I have to stay in an Airbnb or a hotel, which I do sometimes do when I visit my family, Sometimes I stay with family, sometimes I have my own place. It depends on the time of year, what's going on, um, etc. And then I will have a printed confirmation of the hotel or Airbnb printed out as well with the, the actual um, address on there really crystal clear for myself. Uh, now it is still pandemic time, so um, I always make sure that I have everything printed uh, and in there as well for pandemic stuff. And that is where I would include then the um, approved PCR test results, as well as now my vaccination card. Uh, I keep that all in one compartment together, separated from everything else. That way, if you are unexpectedly asked to uh, show one of those documents, you don't have to look through all of your bags, especially if you're traveling alone with a toddler, you can just go floop, take out your folder that's in that compartment, and then I put like the little post-it color tabs on the side so that I can quickly pick it out and find it um, with as little uh, trouble as possible. I highly recommend this. Uh, if you are more of a digital person, you may prefer to do these things on your phone. But again, in case your battery dies or um, if you need to access your internet in order to do that, it is always useful to uh, have a paper copy on hand as well. Okay, tip number two for flying internationally or overseas with a toddler is to try if you can if it doesn't make or break the the price uh, that your ticket will cost you try to time it with naps if possible if your child is still on a regular nap schedule that would be ideal if you could find a flight in that window of when they are napping or um, on the way back for example whenever i fly back from the u.s to the netherlands it is extremely comforting to know that my child has now gotten accustomed to the uh, time zone change and the flights are basically always red uh, red eye flights so overnight flights from the US back to the Netherlands so it's like oh so nice because I know she's going to sleep on the plane and all of these things that I had to worry about on the way over I didn't have to uh, worry about as much so uh, definitely try to time it with the sleeping schedule and think about um, not necessarily the most convenient uh, schedule to get your child to sleep on the plane, but when are their cranky times? When is it the hardest for them to sit still and try to find flights um, that uh, basically will be the best for your child according to their routine and schedule? Okay, tip number three. Um, this is one that um, I did differently when uh, my daughter was a baby to what I do now, but that is to make sure that your child has something to um, basically either chew or swallow while they are, while your plane is taking off and while it is landing because of the air pressure for their ears. So when my daughter was a baby, because she took her first flight when she was six weeks old and she has flown I think close to 20 times at this point, I'm at probably about 20 flights um, and most of them international flights uh, at this point, whether it was, um, you know, just uh, something within Europe or if it was from Europe to the United States, she has flown a lot. And um, what I did when she was really little, I read somewhere that um, drinking milk was bad for the or formula or breast milk. It was bad uh, because it could, there was something about like the way that swallowing it, it just wasn't. So I didn't know if that was accurate or not, but I didn't want to risk it. So I would always give her a little bit of milk uh, before as we were kind of taxied, just to kind of calm her as we were sitting there and waiting. And then as the plane was taking off, I would have the pacifier in her mouth so that she would uh, suck on that and that would help with the air pressure with her ears. Uh, now that she is too old for a pacifier, uh, she's close to three years old at this point and she hasn't had a pacifier since um, I think about two, like around the time she turned two or even before she turned two, I think we took it away a little bit after perhaps. Around age two was when it ended. Um, but to, since she no longer has the pacifier, uh, what I did switch to was doing formula. Uh, and then on the way back on this last uh, trip, when she was two and a half, on the way back, I didn't have any formula left and it wasn't 
worth buying like another can of it just for a flight since I knew that I would have some back in the Netherlands at home. Uh, what I did was I just went uh, to McDonald's and got some regular milk since she is two and a half and can drink it. And uh, she, I got a couple of those like kids milk things and I put that in a bottle for her and that worked great. Uh, she no longer drinks so either formula or from bottles. So this next trip, I'm going to have to probably use more of like a straw cup drink and then just give her something that she really likes to drink. Uh, juice is not something she drinks very often. It's a treat for her or regular milk. She also likes to drink that. So we will probably do that at the time of takeoff and landing. And what I've also read is that um, even just chewing, so for adults, gum is a good option, uh, but maybe also um, I can give her a snack and something to drink in order to get her swallowing as we take off and land. So I do recommend making sure that if your child has a pacifier, that that would be a really good one to do. And if not, some kind, something to eat or drink during takeoff and landing would be really helpful to help them with the air pressure changes. Okay, so tip number four is related to that and that is snacks 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 all the time snacks um there are so many reasons why you need to have snacks on hand um first of all don't ever count on the airport having what you need or want um you never know uh, so you need to make sure you have things with you that you know your child will like and um, will eat right even if they don't like it at least something you know that they will eat uh, because being hungry uh, can really lead to tantrums and also just simply giving your child something to do to distract them, that can be helpful. And if you are traveling somewhere where the food is different or just things in general are really different for your child, that's a lot for a child to take in. So having their favorite snack or the things that they're used to is comforting to them. So my daughter often eats crackers, which um, here we call it in the Netherlands, Melba toast. And that is something that she really likes and eats on a regular basis. So that was kind of comforting for her. Uh, in general, on this last trip, I, I think it was a bit, um, I was a little bit emotional for her. I don't know how, how, what's the right word for it. Um, I think it was not, I don't want to say traumatic. It wasn't traumatic, but it was just intense for her to always be eating different things other than what she was used to eating because food is really different in the United States than it is in the Netherlands or Europe in general. And um, there's, you know, sugar added to bread um, and just food is much more processed. And it's just really, especially when you don't necessarily always have a full on kitchen where you're staying, uh, it's just, yeah, it's different. Or if you're traveling and you're eating out all the time, it's it's very different. So having the Melba toast on hand, um, those crackers for her to eat that she was used to was really, really helpful for her and for me. And it's really good also as a form of distraction if it's needed or if you just don't like what they serve on the plane or what you have avail available in the airport, you have lots of options to keep your child happy and feeling a bit of home while they are traveling. So make sure you have plenty of snacks uh, if you would like to hear more about my recommendations for what kinds of snacks or how to pack them, leave a comment below and I will make a video on that topic for you. Okay, tip number five is to bring toys. Um, now I'm going to give a couple of recommendations. This will be very child specific, of course, because every child is different and likes different things. Different things will work for different children. But at the same time, um, I know that I was very tempted to be minimal when traveling alone with my toddler. But what time and experience has shown me is that having less with me isn't less stressful. Uh, I understand like when I'm traveling by myself, I take as few items as possible. Like literally now that I'm a mom, especially when I travel alone with my daughter internationally, I take almost nothing for myself. I take the bare minimum to bring my stress level down. But when it comes to things for her, I literally never know what I'm going to truly need or want when I'm traveling. And I would rather have a little bit of extra pain in my back carrying some things that I may not need or use versus not having something on hand that really would have helped in that moment. So um, I definitely think that you should bring a small but strong uh, arsenal of toys with you. So you have, especially on these longer international flights, that you have some options 
for them. Um, because even if, um, I'm going to talk about screen time and tablets a bit later, but even if you have that, um, it's not just the fact that it's bad for your child to be on a screen for eight hours in a row, but it's also the fact that you never know, even if it's a, something that you never do and it's such a treat for them, they may get bored of it and they may want something else. Even if you think, Mo, my kid never gets bored of watching their tablet, they will do things that will surprise you all the time. You really can never know when they're going to just shift and want something different than the thing they normally always want. So you do want to have backups and alternatives, even if you think you have the thing that you know they want to um, watch or do or read the whole time, take backups. Trust me, it's better to not have used something and carried it around than it is to have not taken something and then to have really wanted or needed it on your flight, okay? Or on your drive or boat or train ride or whatever it is in your uh, travels. So here are some tips. Um, I'm going to link these in the description box below as well. A uh, water wow from Melissa and Doug. They also have like magic marker ones. Either option is good. Uh, the no mess kind of uh, hassle free type of coloring books are the best. The fewer pieces you have to deal with, the better. Uh, stickery, sticker books and or um, coloring books, you have to be careful with stickers. There are some stickers I've seen, I couldn't find, I looked through a bunch of YouTube videos, I couldn't find the name of it. There's supposedly some kinds of stickers that are really easy to take, put on and take off of the windows that kids like. Um, I would never let my child put stickers on the plane because I would be too scared I couldn't get them off or I would forget about it and leave them there and I would feel really guilty if I did that. Um, but I have then like books that she can put stickers in that you know belong to us that we take on and take off the plane. So that is something that she really likes to do as well as coloring books. Um, so I take just like a couple of crayons, not too many options. And um, then she can either color in the books or use the stickers or both. She often does both them. Um, and I do that in combination with the water wow uh, options from Melissa and Doug. And of course I don't put the water in uh, before we go through security. That's empty as we are uh, before we go through the security as well because you don't wanna get caught with liquids that were not in a plastic bag because you don't wanna have any extra trouble, believe me. Um, and I always make sure that I take like at least one or two small books uh, because she does love to read. So even though I know she's not gonna wanna read the same books over and over, um, she uh, at least has some option then to read while we are on the plane and at least one stuffed animal, but since our child is really obsessed with stuffed animals, um, it's usually a couple of stuffed animals. Um, like limiting it to two or three is already really limiting it because she likes to play with literally all of her stuffed animals and she has a ton of them. Uh, it is the thing that I hoped the most that she wouldn't like, uh, not because I'm a minimalist, I do try to minimize things, um, but not in like a true hardcore minimalist fashion, just a, you know, less clutter, keeps the mind freer, better for the environment kind of idea. But unfortunately she loves stuffed animals and she literally sleeps with about 30 stuffed animals in her bed at night. It's, it's pretty crazy, but hey, if it makes her happy and it's not hurting anyone or her development, then why not? Right? Uh, it just makes it hard with space and packing, but um, if it makes her happy, it makes her feel comfortable and calm. I don't mind taking a few stuffed animals in addition to a couple of books because it really helps make the flight go more smoothly and it also just helps your child feel better and, and more at peace and that's really important. Okay, then that brings us to tip six or um, six. And that is to have a tablet. I know, I know. So I am not, I am not a parent that is either really against or for tablets or screen time. I know that too much screen time is bad and that is why our child doesn't have that much. We follow the world um, health organization uh, recommendations or guidelines on the amount of screen time a child should have. And um, I do generally follow Montessori and Waldorf um, educational philosophies and um, playing outside and using your imagination and having tangible, real holistic toys made out of um, organic materials. Those are things that are prevalent in um, our child's upbringing and in our home. 
uh, but there is also a TV in our house and she does sometimes watch TV. And we did, I was very nervous before my flights um, this last time when she was two and a half, I was very nervous about flying alone with her and doing, um, I had to, because of the pandemic, my flight got canceled two times and I ended up having to book a direct flight to a city that was a five hour drive from where my family is. So I needed to actually, um, it was a lot of work to fly from Amsterdam then to uh, Atlanta and then, you know, take a shuttle bus with her, with a car seat, with our bags, with a stroller, and with a child, <laughs> and then take a shuttle bus to where the car rental was and then to um, install the car seat into this rental car that I've never seen in my life before and then drive five hours after being on a flight that was eight or nine hours and then checking into a hotel because we had to quarantine and uh, stay away from people for, um, I think it was seven days or something like that. And it just, it was a lot. Um, I was really nervous about it and I, I ended up getting our, her, my husband and I agreed that we would get my, uh, our daughter a tablet. So we got, uh, we couldn't get the, we wanted to get, I think it was called the Kindle Fire or something for kids. Um, that wasn't available for us in the Netherlands, um, or at least not in like with really expedited shipping since we made the decision kind of last minute in panic, or I was in panic. And um, it was a great decision. The tablet really came in handy when we were stuck in traffic or when we were waiting around a long time and I wanted to leave my daughter um, buckled into the stroller so she wouldn't run off. Um, it came in handy for those moments. We also got um, headphones, of course, so that it wouldn't be playing and distracting the other people on the plane, um, which she didn't really like using that much. But then I just had the volume. Um, I still had them plugged in, so she would literally watch it without the sound. And that also was fine um, and came in handy. So I do uh, recommend getting a childproof case for the tablet if you get a tablet. And I do recommend, um, you know, not overusing it, but when it really is needed, then get it and she actually watched without sound um the like behind the seat um shows they had some t kid shows on there and she found that pretty interesting and watched the same like Minnie mouse um episode or mickey mouse episode like four or five times over it was like a 15 minute episode and she really liked that even even without sound on she just thought the visuals were were nice so that was a nice surprise as well okay and uh tip number seven this is um a combined tip so um bring a stroller it's going to be helpful if you have a baby it is really good to have a carrier uh, but if your child is too large to be carried then having a stroller is a lifesaver so you can take care of checking in and security unpacking things and everything without your child running off um, an umbrella stroller something that's easy to um, fold down and open up with one hand if needed kind of quick um, light is better as well um, if it has a little bit of storage, that's nice, but the more storage or more fancy it is, the heavier it is. So that can also be a drawback. Um, but I definitely recommend um, having the stroller and just gate uh, checking it and definitely will come in handy for you on your travels. And uh, related to that, um, recently I took a car seat with me for the first time on this last trip. Uh, definitely get yourself a backpack uh, car seat bag. And a little tip, you can actually throw in some things. They don't check the bag like what's exactly in it. It does go through security, but when you're checking it in, they don't check. Um, and honestly, I think that I'm going to um, intentionally put some extra clothes in or diapers in for padding as well as to help with the space in my normal luggage um, next time because you are allowed to do that they don't care uh, as long as it's not excessive right um, and it is free in most airlines so um, get a car seat bag check your car seat and uh, gate check your stroller and take the stroller with you that is tip number seven you can thank me later Okay, tip number eight is to pack smart. <laughs> um, make sure to pack things in categories and to separate them. So for me, I usually use um, vacuum bags. So um, I do like kids t-shirts, boom, adult t-shirts, boom, uh, underwear, kids and uh, mom, boom, uh, you know, toiletries, boom. Everything is in its own plastic um, container then. Or I know there are these things called packing cubes. I'll try to find some good ones and link them below. I may even purchase some myself for the next trip uh, because my vacuum bags, the seals are starting to get worn down after many, many years of using them. So yeah, that um, vacuum bags are nice because it makes it smaller. 
packing cubes um, from what I've seen on some other video reviews look really nice as well. So I'm interested in trying those. Uh, but simply having things already ready to go in categories, both in your carry-on bag as well as in your checked luggage, will make your life so much, so much easier. So pack in categories so that you can, and color coding them or writing what's on them on the outside will be super helpful as well. Um, and you never know when you need what, when you're on a flight or traveling. So you definitely want to uh, make sure that you label them correctly or make them obvious that you have like a color code system or something in place so that you can just grab it quickly because you know which uh, packing cube or bag it is in. Tip number nine is maybe one that won't be that popular with others, but, um, and to be honest, it wasn't the hugest help to me, but just the fact I knew I had it with me was really um, helped my my nerves it calmed my nerves and that is to have a leash backpack um i will link a couple of ones that i like in the description box i will try to find the one that we have um, my daughter actually really likes it i'll go and grab it one moment okay this is the one we have for um, our daughter it is a butterfly backpack here so it's like a normal backpack. Um, this part here is the leash. It's in a little bit of a weird way. So you can see that the, the backpack here, it's adjustable too. So it fit her when she was like one. This, that's when we got it was when she was one that if she started to become kind of fussy in the stroller, then we could let her walk, but then we could have her safely um, like with us because she's also not the best at holding hands. So this um, was adjustable and it still fits her at almost three. Um, a little bit harder if she has a puffy coat on though. And then here it has like a, kind of, I'll show it here. So this is the, the buckle where it ties onto the back of the backpack. So it's not like really, it's not like a leash for a dog because it's not actually attached to her. It's attached to the backpack, which is then harnessed onto her. Um, so it's not uncomfortable if she tries to pull away. It's just hard for her to get away. And it has here like this little thing. I don't use it that much because I feel a little bit, I don't know, like I still feel a bit guilty using it even though it doesn't hurt or anything and it's for her safety. But it has like her headphones and um, a little, you know, like card. Um, you can see she colors and put stickers on it, um, tissues, uh, band-aids and stickers, uh, playing cards, uh, just some a couple of little fun things for her a couple of crayons uh, so it's just like a really easy grab bag of activities it's her carry-on then and she likes it um, when she was little I called it her wings that would let her like run free but um, generally she actually I use it mostly without the leash now because it's her carry-on but if we are traveling and I'm worried about her getting away and she's walking, then I do attach it. Um, and it has just come in handy and I think that it is a wonderful purchase. It is great as either a bag or as a safety feature if your child is walking in a crowded place and you don't want them to run off. So yeah. Okay, um, tip number 10, the final official tip of this video is to have um, in, you know, your... Uh, Basically attached to it, you should have like a little to go sanitizer so you can sanitize your hands. Of course, uh, in the meantime, there are tons of hand sanitation stations because of the pandemic, but sometimes the, it, the little dispensers are empty or they don't actually have them. And especially now uh, during travels with a pandemic, but even after when the pandemic is uh, much more contained, there are so many germs and things going around when you're traveling in crowded places. So you want to make sure that you sanitize and wash your hands as much as possible. And having um, uh, wipes, so not just for changing diapers, but also just for washing your, your kid's hands or face uh, quickly and um, easily, always make sure that you have them in an easy to reach place. You uh, will be very grateful for having that, especially if something spills unexpectedly. Um, as well as having a change of clothes kind of connected to that. Have a change of clothes for yourself and for your child. Um, generally, I take at least two changes of clothes for my daughter uh, when we are traveling. Um, I have learned from experience. 
and um, I also take maybe at least a, a top for myself. Uh, I don't necessarily take two pairs of pants. I think that's excessive, but I try to take like a long shirt so that in case like something drops on me and my pants, <laughs> that the long shirt would cover it. And I just make sure to to dress and pack in a way that makes sense that if something happens to what either of us are wearing, that we can quickly change into something dry. And I always take some empty little like plastic bags to put the wet, dirty things in um, when we are mid-air or in the middle of driving or something that it's just quick and easy to make that change. I think it's really important um, with the sanitizer and the wipes is to include band-aids. I kind of mentioned it already but not specifically. Uh, Band-aids and some form of Tylenol or pain reliever in case your child um, gets a temperature as well as well as a thermometer. Things that you're comfortable with using and know is the appropriate dosage um, and use for your child. Make a little mini first aid kit and put that with the sanitizer and wipes. That's all basic health that your child needs and having that with you will be really helpful when you are traveling and even just get, having that peace of mind that it's there is worth the taking extra stuff you may or likely won't need. It's worth it because honestly, at the end of the day, our jobs as parents are to take care of the health and happiness of our child and if we can't do something as basic as um, you know give our child Tylenol while they have a fever and we're traveling then we're not really doing our job so we need to make sure that we think ahead and have that stuff with us and even though it's annoying to carry that all with us it is so much better to have it with you and don't beat yourself up if you forgot something it's a lot when you have to take so much stuff with you when you have a toddler or when you have multiple kids uh, but if you try to plan ahead and have a system, it gets easier with experience. But um, yeah, just try to make sure that you have that stuff with you because you never know what can happen when you're traveling and you'll be really happy uh, that you have it if you actually need it. So yeah, um, so those were my top 10 tips. And then this last one's not really a tip, but it's, well, it is a tip, but it's kind of common sense, but just, I need to say it. Get to the airport early. You never, never know what's going to happen. You'd never know if you're going to have issues with security or um, there's going to be traffic on the way or you can't find parking or so many other things that can happen. Plan to be there at least an hour earlier than when they say you should be there at least. Um, just, uh, it's better, trust me. And I know that it sucks when everything works out and you're there earlier than you need to be. Just walk around the airport a little extra if that happens and count your blessings that you didn't miss your flight uh, because that would be really difficult to do and deal with, uh, especially if you're alone with a toddler. That would be really difficult. And everything takes longer with a toddler, everything. So the buffer time is really needed, believe me. Um, and that's it. So I hope you found these 10 tips useful and um, congratulations on traveling with your toddler. If you're watching this video, I assume that you will be traveling soon with your toddler. Um, and I think that you will do a great job. Comment below uh, in the comment section if you successfully uh, completed your trip or if you have any questions uh, or want some more tips um, related on anything specific. I would love to hear after you've taken your trip how it went and if you used any of these tips. And I will see you for uh, future parenting and or expat related videos here on Momming Abroad. Take care. Bye.